Finally, let's look at the impedance of a capacitor. And so in the same way to our previous devices, we're going to try to find the impedance of the capacitor by looking at the relationship between the voltage and the current. So to start with, let's imagine that we have a capacitor up here and that because of the voltage source that is across it, there does exist some voltage across the capacitor. And as we've done previously, we'll say that this voltage source is some sort of cosine function with some sort of magnitude, and we will write it out as we have done so far. So we get a magnitude in our two exponential terms from our Euler's identity. Now, we have our voltage right here. We also need to find the current but we can recall from our original discussion of capacitors that the current across the capacitor is related to the derivative of the voltage times the capacitance. And having just found the expression for the capacitance or the voltage across the capacitor, we can take the derivative of it. And so I'm just going to take this expression that was up here and plug in down here. And so as we pull out things that are constant, and as we rearrange, we find out that we only have to take the derivative, again, of a very small function. So again, it's this e to the jwt term, and the derivative of that term is rather simple because you just take the derivative of the exponent, which would be wt, and now we're left with this long expression. And as we've done previously, I can take this top expression here, and I will move it over here, and I can take this bottom expression here, and I'll move it over here, and we will end up dividing the two quantities. So if I can take this really long expression on the top, and I just rewrite it, and I take this even longer expression on the bottom, and rewrite it, and you wish iPad had a way to copy all of this, what ends up happening is a lot of these uh, variables end up canceling out. So these are gone. This right here term is gone. This J phi term is also gone. And so what we're left with is 1 over J W uh, C. So one mistake that is in here is that when the derivative of this was taken, this should have been J w, j instead of w, t. Um, and so we'll just go ahead and fix that with our magic pen and that this is our final expression for the impedance of a capacitor. Now when we look at the impedance for a capacitor it's a little more complicated uh, than our impedance for an inductor. So we, we still have this imaginary term, we still have a frequency term, and we still have our capacitance. But let's play the similar sort of game and ask yourself, what happens in really low uh, frequency situations? So if I have a signal where the frequency is approaching zero, what happens to the impedance of my circuit? And so in this example of here, I will get one over zero, which the limit of that actually approaches infinity. And so if we recall that this low frequency situation here is really the DC condition, what we're saying is that in a DC situation, in a low frequency situation, our capacitor that's normally there is going to end up becoming an open circuit. It's going to have an infinite impedance, which is the same thing as having sort of an infinite resistance in a DC situation. So in a DC condition, this circuit is going to end up being, or this capacitor is going to end up being an open circuit. And this matches with our previous intuition that in a DC situation, all of our capacitors end up being open circuits. So now let's apply the same analysis, but imagine what happens in a circuit where it is oscillating rapidly, where the frequency of the source that's driving the circuit is infinite. And so what we end up here is one over some infinite value, which means that the impedance goes to zero. So what's happening here is that as the circuit becomes faster and faster and faster and faster, um, our capacitors end up just simply disappearing 
from the circuit. So in a high frequency situation where our capacitor is here, what ends up happening is that our capacitor just goes away and it becomes a short circuit. So at low frequencies, like this one right here, our capacitor becomes an open circuit. But in a high frequency situation, our capacitor ends up becoming a short circuit. So our capacitors are going to pass high frequency signals and then sort of prevent low frequency signals from coming through. So as a quick summary, in our low frequency settings, our capacitor becomes an open circuit. So this is again our DC condition for our capacitor. And in a high frequency situation where the frequency of the circuit is becoming infinite, it becomes a short circuit and this is our high frequency response. And again, if we want to visualize the overall frequency response of the capacitor, sort of as this uh, frequency changes, what is its impedance? Again, at low frequency, it is infinite, it's really high, and at high frequency, it is zero. And so it is not a linear curve like our other devices, but more of a uh, hyperbolic curve that has endpoints at the two extremes.